Okay. Today we're sitting down on a chilly fall day, waiting for the snow to come. <laughs> And today we're talking, or we're going to be talking about expensive bushcrafting knives versus cheap bushcrafting knives. Now I feel eerily familiar of this topic and I'm not sure if I've covered it before, but if I have, it's worth going over again and talking about what to expect with bushcrafting knives as a whole and where you should really go. And I will say to get it out of the way in the beginning, if you are starting out as a bushcrafter, I've made several videos talking about this uh, before, but essentially uh, when, you do, when you do start out, the reality is a cheaper bushcrafting knife, something like this, Moran Knives Bushcraft Black, will be able to get done all of your basic camp tasks, your realistic stuff that you're going to be doing when you go out into the wilderness. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the Bushcraft Black by Mora, but just your general camp knives are gonna be able to get done most of what you need to get done. And if you're starting out, it's better to invest in quality axes, hatchets, and saws, because when we look at something like what I'm around here, you know, the fire reflector, this, uh, you know, kind of shelter here, this cover, um, and stuff like that, you know, this is all built with axes, hatchets, and saws. This isn't knife stuff anymore. And in a reality, if you're trying to set up your own bushcrafting campsite or base camp like this, you know, you're going to be using larger tools. And so it's better to invest in high quality tools like these, like GBAs, Holtzbrook, uh, and different axe makers like that. And of course, you know, Silky or uh, Baco saws. So that's where you should spend if you have, you know, a form of budget for bushcrafting tools or tool set, you should spend your money in getting high quality axes, hatchets, and saws. Knives, like I said, are good and it's important to have a good knife, but there's a lot of diminishing returns. So this, you know, $40 Mora can do basically everything that this $250 BRK can do. The only difference is the BRK is slightly more refined. It's going to hold its edge longer, much longer, and it's going to, you know, maybe be a little bit more comfortable, more natural, but by and large, it's not that this knife is going to be able to do something that this knife just can't. That's not quite how this works. So let's jump into the differences and ultimately, I think, what to expect when it comes to buying a more expensive, buying a more expensive bushcrafting knife. So, like I said, the first and biggest thing you'll notice, even between these two blades, and I'm sorry that they're so far away from the camera, but the biggest thing you'll notice is ergonomics. The Bushcrafter feels very good in the hand, whereas the Bushcraft Black doesn't feel bad in the hand, but it definitely feels a lot less refined and it feels a lot less comfortable. Like, you wouldn't want to hold this and carve for two hours. This would definitely have hot spots and become uncomfortable. However, if you just pull this out to cut a piece of rope and put it back in its sheath, it'll be more than fine. In addition to that, uh, the more expensive knife, like I said, has more premium materials. So CPM 3V is going to hold an edge forever. This stuff legitimately, so long as you take proper care of it and you're not, you know, batoning it through rocks, this stuff is basically going to hold its edge with very little maintenance and very little upkeep. In addition to that, even though this blade is diamond or DLC coated, you know, if these were two raw steels, this is C100, which is basically 1095, which will rust. And even as the DLC coating wears, the blade will rust and patina. Whereas CPM 3V, it is a tool steel, so it's not impervious to rust, but being that it is a powdered metal, it's going to be a lot more resistant to things such as rust. So not as easy to sharpen, but it holds an edge much longer, and it also is much more corrosion resistant. So if you're getting things like blood on it, if it's getting wet, it's going to be a lot less likely to rust. 
or so I'm sure there's a few things that I'm definitely going to miss of course brand name and brand recognition is another big factor that plays into price you know uh, not everyone has heard about BRK or Bark River Knives but they are certainly a preeminent force in that, uh, in the wilderness or woods survival bushcrafting community they make good knives and the other thing you might end up paying more for that isn't necessarily a physical attribute is the name behind it so there are some knives knives that even i own such as the lt Wright knives legome that was designed in part by several people but one of them being uh the now late or the late uh morris kohansky so if you uh you know if you believe or if you believe the teachings or if you really enjoy the teachings of people like Morris Kohansky, having a knife that he put his hand, you know, into the design may be something worth going out of your way and spending that extra money. You know, the designers of this Bushcraft Black, no one really knows who they are and no one really cares. So those are some external factors, brand and designer, uh, that go into a knife that aren't necessarily physical attributes that can increase the price. Lastly is really the sheath design and the sheath quality. You know, this has a nice leather sheath made in America, very high quality, very durable, and, you know, something that is definitely premium, whereas this has a, you know, very generic, very cheap piece of plastic sheath that, you know, gets the job done. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that, that is the reality when it comes to bushcrafting knives, is that cheaper bushcrafting knives get the job done. They do the work that they need to do. And more expensive knives get the job done, but they get the job done better. And, you know, like I said, they're more comfortable to use, they're more natural to use, the weighting is better on them, they feel more comfortable, they may be more durable in a lot of cases, especially nowadays, you know, with modern metallurgy, a lot of knives are not weak like they used to be, so even back in the, you know, 70s and 80s, you know, a cheap knife might seriously be very suspect to failure because metal just wasn't, or steel, had different impurities and different problems with it back then and the quality control of steel wasn't like it is today. So, you know, by and large, this knife, as far as durability goes, will likely be just as durable as this blade, but, you know, they are going to have varying levels of durability and by and large, your more expensive knives are probably going to be more durable. I say probably because there are lemons among every knife maker whether it's mora or bark river knives you know they all have lemons so you might just get a bad one that breaks so anyways that is the general differences between expensive and bushcraft expensive and cheap bushcrafting knives once again there's nothing wrong with a cheap bushcrafting knife in fact i've been running my bushcrafter with this bushcraft black as a pair a lot here of late and I have no complaints with the Bushcraft Black. I use this a lot, and once again, I kind of keep the Bushcrafter as my backup in case I hit something or hit some, you know, kind of a wall, so to speak, where the Bushcraft Black just isn't cutting it, so isn't cutting it, all puns intended, and I can pull out my Bushcrafter, but they do, but the Bushcrafter, or the Bushcraft Black, does a pretty excellent job, and it is certainly a good design, not quite to the spec of something like this super high quality knife but it is a good knife nonetheless so anyways that is the basic differences between expensive and cheap bushcrafting knives as i'll say again definitely invest in you know hatchets axes and saws more because really the weight distribution of your tools uh in workload is going to be that your your axes hatchets and saws are going to do about 80 percent of the work whereas your knives are gonna do about 20% of the work. And that 20% that twenty percent is still really important. It's not any less important than the 80%, but that 
of workload it's going to allow you to with reasonable ease you know build larger crafts build a bushcrafting base camp you know to let you really start bushcrafting i mean it's hard to bushcraft when you don't have a form of a base camp to go to to start fires you know to practice a lot of your bushcrafting skills so it's important to start out with a high quality axe and a high quality saw because they really do make a large difference. I mean, if you can get away with a Corona saw, then great. If you can get away with a, you know, eBay mystery vintage ax and you can restore it and you have the time, awesome, more power to you. But by and large, it is easy to pick up, you know, or even though it's a little bit more expensive, you know, picking up a Grand Forest Brooks ax or hatchet and using this, there's a world of difference and they really do prove themselves very fast out here. So anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as always, God bless and I'm out.